strength of the pack is the wolf. And the shelter now.
Okay, my camera just died. Yeah, like I said, I absolutely hate Fox News. That's up for KNC. It just has that feeling, Damon, where we can't move fast enough and we can't we can't like predict exactly where these things are gonna pop up. Um, it's it's really, really difficult out here trying to chase these things at night. I can tell you that for sure. But we're gonna do our very best to try to get eyes on any of these storms and um, and let you know if we can confirm, you know, any type of power flashes or anything like that. But it's it's a significant challenge for us on the ground right now. And and All right. a significant challenge you know, for anybody here's what I'm going to do. That, that listen sometimes these big broad areas are kind of issued for a tornado warning and, the, and, and it may be just kind of like a small area that's really here's what i'm going to do being hit by the tornado so it's just that's that comes with the territory when we're dealing with these quick spin up tornadoes they're just uh they're really challenging they absolutely are. That's why we got to watch scan by scan. And so your all's reports out in the field are so important. Let's go back over to the radar right now. And so once again, Cleveland County, no longer in a uh, tornado warning. I know, Norman, another hailstorm came through. I've seen y'all's pictures. Lots of damage, cars, lots of dents. I hate to see it, but <coughs> let's go uh, Excuse me. track with this storm that Mike was just referring to, Seminole 906 Cromwell at 922. Let's check back in with our tornado warning that is going to be up making its way to Lincoln County, and it is going to be where Buck currently is. You can just see how this thing just spins right on through here, just west of 177. That's it right here, west of Rossville. Rossville, you're in your tornado shelter right now, south of just southwest of Highway 177. Buck right there, just south of Weston. We'll talk to Buck here in just a moment. But this is Rossville, up Rossville. And it is Where the hell is Rossville right in this damn thing? Way into Rossville at 8:35. That's right about now. Stroud at 9:21. Let's go out to Buck. Right now, you're the only person oh, okay. in the entire state, Buck. All right. Let's not get a wind soon. Rossville, Rossville, where's Rossville? Here's Stroud, there's Davenport. Rossville, can't see Rossville on this damn map. <laughs> Okay, we'll get we'll get back uh, we'll get Buck back on there in just a moment. Um, but right now, let's go back over to the radar. And so this is what Buck is talking about. Uh, this cell right here, this couplet moving up to the northeast. Once again, Warwick 848, and then we start going into the Tulsa area. These storms are going to be out of the KOC5 viewing area in the next 60 minutes or so. Have some back, we have some storms that are going to be on the backside. Jonathan, let's pull on out. Let's look at the big picture right now because we're trimming tornado watches uh, pretty quickly here. We still have storms out across western Oklahoma, but those are not severe. Right now, the line of severe weather is right down I-35, moving to the east. Let's check in with this. Let's check in down for Paul's Valley. Elmore City and Wittingwood. Let's get an update. This All right, so real quick, I need a mark. Where is it? Um, where's Ponca City? Ponca City has to be on this map somewhere. Right now, at least for now, need a mark that there was an SVR there. <clears throat> This morning still carries us until about another 30 minutes or so. It's moving pretty quickly to the east. At I don't know if you can see it, but so, big, big actually, I can use this. If you're in Paul's Valley, Katie, Davis, Turner Falls, uh, right down I-35, 60 mile an hour winds. They're going to come in here and quarter size hail with these. We're going to watch it closely for 20 minutes. Y'all can't see right it. Now, as of this current radar scan, not seeing a big tornado threat yet. You can't, so, you can't really see it, but it says now. SVR. Tornado warning has been <clears throat> for Oklahoma County, not Lincoln County. So, uh, let me write it towards, uh, a bit bigger. So now it's just going to be for this. You can kind of see now. This is the only tornado warning so, that we have right now. Rightly yeah. So, 
That's the couplet. Two miles north of Rossville, to south of Wellston, moving up to the northeast. We're going to check back in with Buck. All right. Let me get down from here. Okay. And up to the northeast. I'm pretty concerned about at least how close right. he's getting to this. They may want to stop if this keeps moving up to the northeast. But just a heads up, this couple is going to move right in front of you. Uh, slow down a bit if you can, but... Just south of Warwick, you're in your tornado shelter right now. If you're in Warwick, Buck, out here we go. Give us an update, Buck, of what you're seeing. Start uh, of tornado trend. Actually, on the turn, turn five, it was not a pretty clear sky from where we're at. I feel like if I can get some illumination from the lightning, I can build a speaking Then I'm going to mark down here. Hanging out of this, but as of right now, I'm not able to. I hate lead pencils. So you can see there, SBR, because there was one for Jefferson County. So, I'll have to give a, okay, give a particular time on that. Actually, there we are. SBR, because there was Jefferson County. Let's go back over to the radar right now. Here's that couplet moving up to the northeast. Tornado warning for them. Stretched out. That's a good sign, but it's not a great sign because if anything, it's also pretty strong winds. And then spin ups here. One and a half miles north of Rossville. Hill here's Rossville. Here's 177. Moving up to northeast. Warwick, if, uh, you're in your shelter. Please, if not your shelter, innermost room of your house. As this is moving up to the northeast, and it will move into Warwick in the next five minutes. Once again, the tornado warning. So, goes, tornado warning. Or, no there was tornado here. It's only Lincoln County where this tornado warning is in effect. And so, Oklahoma County, we have trimmed the fat off of this polygon. And so, Oklahoma County, no longer an issue. Stroud, it moves in at 916. You can see the latest radar scan here. Still so, tornado, tornado warning. So, yeah. I don't know how we didn't get tornado warning. We really should have. So I'm going right here. Chandler, you're in, you're in your shelter as well, Chandler. You're right on that tornado warning polygon as this moving. I'm riding it. I put hail here because there was hail up there. Can't really see it. But yeah, there was hail from Moore to Norman. With this right here, as this storm continues to just make its way across Lincoln County, just south of the turnpike. A lot of rain so, as well. We're still dealing yeah. with a rain threat with this. Let's check in with Chris Lee. Chris Lee, you're in Pottawatomie County right now. Chris, give us an update right now with what you're seeing right along I-40. Yeah, David, right along I-40, very heavy rain. Picked up a little bit of small hay. So FFW. Right there north of Shawnee, uh, fairly small hail. And S V R just to mark where just to document that there is a flash flood warning and severe thunderstorm warning. So yeah. So flash flood warning, severe thunderstorm warning. So yeah. Still remains in effect for eastern parts of Oklahoma, Cleveland County, Pottawatomie Seminole, and Lincoln County until 9:15. Pottawatomie County for McLean County. So that storm moving up to the northeast. Let's go back up to our tornado warning. We'll check back in with the tornado warning, and then after this, we're gonna go down into southern Oklahoma and get an update. Some pretty strong winds coming so out. So Pottawatomie County. From just right, south yeah. Of severe thunderstorm warning. Severe thunderstorm warning. Right here. Be, uh, up county. Up Payne County. Alright. Is that it? Oh, wait, I got marked the right thing by Arcadia. And then Chandler at 8.51. You have 10 minutes, Chandler. This storm still moving up to the northeast. This is the only tornado warning in the state right now. And so that's why it's been up here in Arcadia. Watch it closely as it continues to move up to the northeast. Uh, on the left hand side of your television screen, we have Buck. He's going to be in Wellston. All right, so yeah, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to get ready to go to bed. Anyways, thank you for watching, and that'll be it for now. Another tornado warning.
Another tornado warning. Actually, literally just for this tornado. This is a radar indicated threat rotation. The following they just from tornado. tornado. Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. There's confirmed tornado on the ground right now in Warwick. Tree damage is likely. Locations impacted include Chandler, Stroud, Davenport, Wellston, Carney, Tryon, Agra, Warwick, Kendrick, Avery, and Parkland. This includes Interstate 44 between mile markers 156 and 182. Take cover now. Move to a storm shelter, safe room, or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Like I said, they literally just confirmed tornado on the ground. Okay, so um, ultimately, I'm now out of the threat. Now, it doesn't necessarily guarantee there's tornado there, but that's about uh, two two miles east of me. So we're going to go down I-40. Oh, uh, Lord. That heads over toward Johnson, to the, just to the northeast. All right, so right tornado down. warning, uh, that is 50 minutes there. left. Sometimes that's for the most recent one. Spin-ups, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to check that out. Severe thunder warning. 23 minutes left on it. Of course, that's supposed to say severe thunderstorm warning. I think some 12 to 50 actually say severe thunder storm warning. Then flash flood warning. Four hours, 33 minutes. And they may have to consider some type of a warning at some point or at least a flood advisory over here because we are getting a lot of rain so we're yeah that's like the alerts on the uh, I don't know if you got, oh, 12 actually, 50. that's a that's gate to gate now just two miles so yeah that's like um three miles east of us we're gonna okay we're gonna all right looks like there may be a tornado on the ground okay tornado developing. developing so let's get let's go back over to the all radar right. So, tornado severe. Got the tornado warning.
Holy shit, we're under tornado warning. Daylight time for the following counties in Oklahoma. This just got issued. Remember, a tornado watch means the condition. This literally just got issued. And it's semi town. So I'm going to take shelter now. While severe weather may not be imminent, persons should remain alert for rapidly changing weather conditions and listen for later statements and possible warnings. Stay tuned to NOAA Weather Radio, commercial radio and television outlets, or internet sources for the latest severe weather information. The National Weather Service in Norman has issued a tornado warning for Central Oklahoma County in Central Oklahoma. East Central Canadian County in Central Oklahoma until 5.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time. At 5.06 a.m. Central Daylight Time, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over western Oklahoma. The tornado warning for East Central Canadian County is canceled. The tornadic thunderstorm which prompted the warning has moved out of the warned area. Therefore, the warning has been canceled. The tornado warning remains in effect until 5.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time for Central Oklahoma County. At 5.13 a.m. Central Daylight Time, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over western Oklahoma City or over the fairgrounds, moving east at 55 miles an hour. Hazard Tornado. This is a radar indicated threat rotation. Impact. Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged for the no light. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles no, will occur. I got my phone. Tree damage is likely. Locations impacted include Oklahoma City, Southeastern Edmond, Midwest City, Dell City, Bethany, Choctaw, War Acres, Hara, Spencer, Nichols Hills, Jones, Nicoma Park, Arcadia, Forest Park, Lake Aluma, and Smith Village. This includes the following highways, Interstate 35 between mile markers 125 and 140, Interstate 40 between mile markers 142 and 156, Interstate 44 between mile markers 117 and 143. Take cover now. Move to a storm shelter, safe room, or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or Oklahoma City or near Will Rogers Airport, moving east at 30 miles an hour. 
Okay, so it's been about seven months since this event occurred. And now that everything that I need to know has been released, I can now give you some accurate results and basically the final results that were gotten. So basically, the highest rate of tornado there was was a EF2. It it was actually hard to tell because the area where it occurred was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But the highest rated tornado was an EF2. Like I said, it was in the middle of nowhere. So the worst that happened was there was some barns and some really old houses that were wiped away, but I mean, like I said, it was in the middle of nowhere, so there wasn't much damage that it could do. So, yeah, so the highest rate tornado was an EF2, but it didn't cause that much damage. And then, I believe there was about a million dollars worth of damages And keep in mind that's for the whole state. So, I mean, it's not great, but it could have been a lot worse. In fact, this event, I would consider to be pretty minor. I would consider it to be a pretty minor event. I mean, I wouldn't say pretty minor, but it was a minor event. It could have been a lot worse. Fortunately, we didn't get... It wasn't as bad as it could have been, because as you saw, I had the hazardous weather weather outlooks for each day at the beginning of the video, and you could see that there were some days where we had moderate risks. 
And so it could have been a lot worse. But fortunately, it wasn't as bad as it could have gotten. So I think there were a couple hundred people injured. Most of them weren't serious or life-threatening. I think a few were serious. I mean, they weren't as bad as they could have been. And that was because at the time when the tornado rolled, one of them rolled through the Oklahoma City area, it was rush hour. It was about 5 o'clock in the morning in rush hour here in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City area. It's from 5 a.m. until I'd say probably 9 a.m. So rush hour just started. So, had it not been rush hour, there probably would have been less injuries. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't exactly great, but it, it was a minor event. It could have gotten a lot worse, and the events that followed, not just here in Oklahoma, but around the country, were a lot worse. So, we just got what I would consider to be minor stuff. So, it could have been a lot worse, but fortunately... One bad, like I said, I think there are a couple hundred people injured, but m most of them were not severe or life threatening. Most of them just had a few bruises and stuff, which are just minor injuries. I think there were a dozen or two that were serious. But I mean, Considering what it could have been, it could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, I think it was less than 10 people that died. And the people that did die were in areas that were, most of them were in small towns. And didn't really have any good way of getting alerts. So, you know... So, you know, in, when you live in a small town, don't get good cellular coverage and you can't get good coverage on NWR. There's only so much you can do. So, yeah. But yeah, it could have been a lot worse. And like I said, I believe it was less than 10 people that died. And then I think it was about a million dollars worth of damage that was done. But And most of that was actually from here in the Oklahoma City area. Because it went right through downtown. And there was construction equipment and stuff that was damaged. Because they were doing work on our state capitol at the time. So they had a lot of, And it rolled right by the state capitol. So there was a lot of construction equipment and... Stuff that got damaged. So that's pretty much where most of the, uh, the million dollars worth of damages, that's where most of it came from. So, yeah. So if it hadn't struck there, and if they had, and actually if they had finished the project on time, that probably wouldn't have happened. They've delayed it quite a bit. So, Typically, that stuff shouldn't have been there still, but they had issues with the money and stuff. So, it took quite a long time for them to get the restoration of our state capital done. So, had they followed the original plan, that stuff would probably, wouldn't have been there. And it wouldn't have caused a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of damages. But, it is what it is. But yeah, and like I said, it could have been a, a lot worse. Anyway, so I just wanted to give y'all that update. I will be looking at this event more in depth in the future. But that's just the basic stuff that I wanted to let y'all know. As always, thank you so much for watching and be sure to have yourself a nice day.